So, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, Sabah el Eshta, Egypt, Guten Morgen, Deutschland. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, in the interest of time, yeah, we are going to continuously admit guests. It's a big event this morning. Allow me to jump right into it. Yeah, uh, this is a very, very important topic for, for us and for you, Advanced Cargo Information stands for the digitization of customs procedures and imagine a vessel arrives in Egypt and by the time the vessel arrives, yeah, the customs clearing procedures are already being done. This is the vision and today we are going to hear yeah, from experts how this vision is being brought into reality. Um, it is my great pleasure to welcome the all of you to this session and uh, uh, allow me before I uh, briefly introduce your moderator, um, allow me to give you just a technical yeah, uh, topic, technical uh, uh, advice for all those participants to join us from Egypt. Yeah, the German Chamber is going to run a customs procedures mini diploma between 7 and 16th of March. We will pass the link into the chat of this mini diploma. This is, yeah, uh, the participation there is against fees. However, yeah, we are going to explain in details, not we, but uh, experts in that field going to explain in details, not only the regulations and procedures, Customs procedures and systems, yeah, the new law, as we hear lots of things today. Yeah, however, we look into the yeah, detailed material, how and what you need to do in order to comply with that new regulations. It is it is now my 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 great pleasure to introduce to you Mr. Tarek Fami. He is the chairman of the MSC, the Metro uh, Major. Mediterranean shipping company MSC Egypt started its, its activities in 1998 as a shipping agency and then expanded its presence to cover various locations in Egypt. Over the years, MSC Egypt has surpassed all other container carriers to ultimately reach the top position in the Egyptian market. They operate 480 offices across 150 countries worldwide with over 24,000 employees and MSC Egypt also owns and operates a fleet of 80 trucks invested in transferring containers from ports to warehouses and clients facilities. He's also a member of the Alexandria Business Association, the American Chamber of Commerce in Egypt and the Egyptian Businessmen's Association, of course. He is a member not only of yeah. the German Arab Chamber of Industry and Commerce. On top, he is the vice chair of our logistics working group. And I'm very, very happy to have Mr. Fami today. Yeah, and Mr. Fami, yeah, I, I allow me to ask our participants to mute their phones. Yeah, uh, Mr. Fami, the floor is yours. Welcome and very, very happy to have you. Thank you, Jan. Uh, and uh, before the COVID, we used to say mute your phones, but now, uh, now I guess we have to say just mute your your mics. So, uh, so as you know, uh, everyone, Egypt is really in a in a position and a direction of being the most important logistics hub in in the region. And uh, the government is really putting a lot of effort and, uh, and resources uh, to upgrade and make new uh, infrastructure, uh, building uh, roads, uh, building new, uh, new rails. And I think in the coming few years, we are going to see the, uh, infra the logistics infrastructure uh, a totally different, in a totally different place. And of course, the customs being part of this um, uh, uh, part of this in, uh, logistics uh, hub, being part the most important uh, element in the logistics hub. So uh, it has also the government has seen to improve and upgrade uh, the, the the implementation of customs in Egypt. 
because as we all know, I mean, with with uh, either uh, you are shippers abroad or receivers in in Egypt or shippers in Egypt, uh, all shipping lines had to had to call nearly all terminals in Egypt because of the differentiation uh, of the implementation of customs in in each terminal and in each port. So uh, so now that's why there is a need for for what's happening. And uh, and now through MTS, they are upgrading and making uh, a new single national single window platform and uh, to make our lives easier and 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 to choose which terminals uh, we need. We want to operate in depending on the rates, not depending on uh, the customer needs uh, for customs. So, uh, of course, I mean, uh, speaking of MTS, uh, we have uh, no less than engineer Kamal Odd. He is uh, the general, uh, the general manager of, of MTS, working on the single national window, and uh, and of course, Mr. Gamal has been in all his years in a long way of of long path of uh, from being an analyst uh, programmer. Uh, to a senior analyst, to uh, chairman and CEO of uh, of Misraya Technology Systems, and he has always worked on 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 this. I mean, so uh, so he has a lot of uh, a, a, a lot of support from the government, and uh, and therefore I see a lot of uh, that that he can give us a deep insight on this uh, on this issue. Uh, Mr. Gamal was also the deputy general manager of Amiral Management Corporation, and uh, for people who know, Amiral used to uh, uh, used to operate the terminal in Sokna, and it was really one of the first terminals to uh, to work on on a customs single uh, single window system. Um, and uh, and to, from 2019 to date, uh, Mr. Engineer Gamal was uh, general manager of the Misra Technology Services, known as MTS, and is currently working on the national single window for Egyptian trade across across borders. So uh, I would like really uh, to to welcome uh, Engineer uh, Gamal and. Uh, and during the process, if anyone has uh, has questions, please write them in the chat inbox. And uh, so that because we have a lot of participants, so I think it would be better to have written uh, uh, written questions today. So uh, so I want to uh, welcome uh, Engineer Gamal Ott and uh, to give us an insight and uh, and and, the, and also the depth of the advanced cargo information system. Uh, through the the platform Nafisa. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Engineer Gamal, for uh, for joining, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Tarek. What a great day! I'm so actually baffled with these uh, number of enthusiasts and attendees. I'll do my best to uh, to serve the purpose. Uh, my presence here is with you today is to really um, clarify everything about. MTS about the project, about the NAFESA, about the ACI altogether. I know there's a big hype, a lot of talks, and sometimes, most of the time, it may not be as accurate as it should be. So I'll do my best to do that. And as you said earlier, if there would be any questions, no matter how many they are, even if the time would not uh, permit, let me put the video on for a few minutes, uh, trying to keep the quality. All right. And if time does not permit to answer all of these questions, We'll be more than glad to have them uh, in writing by email, and then we can reply to them uh, each to each and every one of them. All right. So please allow me now to share with you a presentation I have just I have just put for this event in particular. I want to make sure to begin. Engineer Gamal, sorry, your mic is muted. What caused it to mute? Anyway, do you see now any screen in front of you about the presentation? Yeah. Yes. Um, yes, now I see. All right. Um, actually, we don't see a screen. No, now we see. Thank you. 
All right. Okay, now I'll go. Number one, I'd like to uh, say good morning. Hello, everybody. Please be relaxed because I'm going to take you through a little journey altogether. And my journey today is about three main things. I'd like to give you a brief historical uh, background about the project and the company and what it is and how how the uh, the, uh, the National Single Window project was shaped. There's a lot of uh, lot of insight to that. And then after that, I'll uh, discuss with you the foundation of the National Single Window, which is called NAFESA. It's a platform. And the platform, of course, has many components, one of which would be systems, the automation, and the integration of parties. And then uh, the third uh, aspect of my uh, presentation today, I'll be addressing the advanced cargo information system as a component, as an integral component of NAFESA as well. All right, so I'll address the first thing. Uh, in order to for you guys to uh, really kind of appreciate and understand all that is about the National Single Window, I'd like to go a little bit back. Number one, I'd like to introduce something. The National Single Window, as Mr. Tarek probably has mentioned, was initially, let's say, tried on a, on a, on a pilot uh, site basis in Sokhnaport. Then uh, there was an initiative to start this project in 2009-2010. Then the events took place in Egypt, so the project was put to sleep, all the way to be revived in, uh, in the vicinity of late uh, 2017. There was interest here and there to, uh, to get it kicking. The, the project in its early stage, I mean in 2010, was basically about augmenting something to the existing customs system by providing, uh, let me put it this way, a more advanced way, a more human way of uh, dealing with the trade community in uh, submitting and receiving services from customs. That was in the old days. But today, the National Single Window is a completely different uh, picture, as I will take you through. In this regard, I'd like to mention, I'll be mentioning a few things that will be food for thought for those of you who would be interested in looking into some of the details to know about how the, sh the, the project was shaped. In this regard, I can remember, okay, I would like to drag your attention to decree number 149 in year 2017. It's a presidential decree. Uh, in that decree, Egypt actually was formally uh, on board or a member in the world, uh, in the trade facilitation agreement, okay? And the agreement was activated in 2019. Uh, that is very important because when we say that we are part or we are a member of a trade facilitation agreement. This means that would be we would have responsibilities. Egypt would have responsibilities to to make to be a proper uh, member of that. There was another decree, number 500, 501, in the same year, to establish a Supreme Council for digital transformation. So uh, thinking about it, this means that uh, the president, the government, was really uh, having. Uh, a strategic move towards uh, digital transformation since 2017. And the first step in it was to establish that Supreme Council for that. Now, 2018 take you in a different spot in place. The SCAP, uh, which is a, a member of the United Nations uh, body, uh, put, something, uh, put something that was very interesting about the single window. And actually, the SCAP is basically about the Far Eastern companies and uh, countries, I mean, and uh, countries like Singapore, like Hong Kong, like, uh, like India, like China, Japan, all those guys have been probably uh, exercising a lot of modern ways of uh, doing business uh, uh, concerning trade across borders. And they put out uh, such a nice, a very nice document, which I'd really uh, advise that everybody would take a look at of those who are interested in it. And they defined in this doc document nine elements that could characterize what would be called a, sing a single window. If I take them from left to right, there should be electronic payment facilities, a single entry point. This means that data, information, documents, and whatsoever need to be lodged, submitted, presented through a, a single facility. You don't, you don't go to more than one place to submit any information and, and, and documents, whatever. It is a paperless environment, a single submission in this regard. You do not repeat or submit a document more than once, no matter what the purpose is, whether it's for the same entity or different entities. 
standardized documents and data. The uh, World Customs Organization, as you all know, has defined years and years ago standards for, uh, for the documents and the data elements that are required for trade across borders. And this data model has evolved to include not only customs, but to, uh, but to, to include also the OGAs or other government agencies that are involved or associated with cargo clearance. The single window should have analytical capability because that would be the tool, the weapon that would be used for the authority that is taking care of the operation of the single window in the country to be able to measure and see where it's good, where it's not as good, and then take proper measures and actions to address such challenges. Sharing of information, that is very important because typically, and it's not only here in Egypt, it's in, in several countries which I witnessed or happened to, to be there for quite some time. Uh, uh, governmental bodies usually work in islands. So each authority has its own budgets, has its own plans, uh, modernization, automation, computerization, and so forth. But it's only these plans and strategies are usually limited to, of course, the, uh, the authority itself. So information usually is not typically shared. And uh, however, no matter how, uh, how advanced uh, these bodies are. Centralized risk management is very uh, core because uh, now with the increasing uh, volume of trade in Egypt, even which we are witnessing now these days and in the future and in all countries, it is not uh, possible to think about, uh, uh, in a sense, uh, inspecting every single box that would come into a port. That would be typically meaningless. In addition to that, doing the inspection, is not, it's it might be necessary in cases, but not sufficient to really find out uh, uh, fraudulent or uh, really uh, improper transactions. Uh, the con one container is so huge and so big, you can always put in something that or uh, a few boxes that should not have been there in, to begin with. So there should be some really uh, scientifically guided, modern, computerized ways of looking and uh, assessing risk uh, in, a, in a more uh, effective uh, way. Last element of the MAI is the coordination between stakeholders. At the end of the day, if I was an importer, I have only one box that came into the port a few days ago, and I would like to see it in my warehouse as soon as possible. It is one box. So all the data that the various government bodies are working on are working on one and the same box. So it's the same box that came on one vessel from one port on one date on one time with the same bill of lading and all these sorts of things. So uh, the the each, each department takes a look into the documents and may need to take a look physically on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the cargo itself and so forth. So coordination between stakeholders is very essential because if we, if, if we do not do it, then this means that such uh, there would be more than one uh, step in the way that will be done by each and every uh, associated uh, agency. And then I'm losing time. My cargo might be subject to really... Uh, uh, theft might be robbery to damage and so forth. So uh, coordinating these things, aligning this, normalizing things is very important. These factors play the role in shaping the project we are about to talk today. Now to run a little bit faster, <coughs> I mean in town, in time, in 2019, uh, actually the, uh, the Ministry of Finance actually uh, was so interested in the project to revive it again, seriously. So the prime minister issued a decree number 20 for year 2019. And with this, he, uh, the decree assigned the, uh, the minister of finance as in a sense, the sponsor uh, of the project to take care of implementing a national single window in Egypt to see to that. The minister of finance issued a decree, the minister of finance being the responsible now uh, person uh, of the project issued the decree to 257 in the same year. Uh, and it uh, in that decree, uh, MTS as a company was uh, given the assignment of implementing the national single window. All right. Uh, why MTS, of course, as I said in the early beginning of my discussion, MTS existed in 2010. The project uh, was there. The idea was there. It would never materialize. So the core, the foundation, 
uh, was there. The, the elements of such a project to, to, to start uh, was, uh, were available. All the ingredients were there. Now, after that, in uh, 2020, Customs Law, as you would all know, Customs issued uh, or uh, published its new law or modernized law, uh, 2007, uh, in year 2020. And in that law, the law draw, drew some uh, framework and guidelines of customs uh, procedures. It was uh, modernized in various ways, including uh, digitization, using uh, digital signatures, and really implementing things and risk. There, such terms were used in, in much more, uh, I would say, uh, explicitly in the law in, in order to modernize the way customs would do its business in the next coming years. And uh, here, the last thing on my entry here was the Minister of Finance issued a decree number 38 uh, in this year, 2021, and that the decree in particular was addressing the first stage of the, of the advanced cargo information system, which I will discuss later. All the, all the, all the, uh, all the uh, entries that I mentioned uh, over the last 10 minutes or so are so uh, uh, important in defining the, uh, the project, the scope, and the way it would work. In that regard, MTS now, as the company that is assigned with that, that task, uh, if you look at this company, we are an Egyptian shareholding company. As I speak today, the Ministry of Finance we actually is, owns 50% plus one share in this company. So our company is a PPP, a partnership between uh, the public and private uh, sectors. Uh, on the private sector, it's 20% here, it's Amiral Management Corporation. As Mr. Fahmi has mentioned earlier, we, uh, Amiral comes with a lot of know-how and talent in, 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 the, in, the, in the business area <laughs> that, the national, that the national single window is addressing. Mm -hmm. So we... So we Sorry? Sorry? Okay. Okay. Um, do, do you hear me, guys? Am I clear? Um, or... Yes, very clear. Okay. Please, Thank everybody, you. just, just the mute the, the mics. Uh, on the public sector side, there is a 30% stake in our company, eFinance, which is another arm of the Ministry of Finance and it relates to the e-payment mechanisms for governmental uh, revenue collections and stuff like that. We have the National Investment Bank, and then we have the Egyptian Company for Investment. If you would notice the structure, the, 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 the shareholder structure of the company is, I would say, balanced in the sense, and it sends messages in different angles. Number one, uh, there is the presence of the private sector being, in a sense, agile, dynamic, uh, forward-looking, uh, is not bound with any kind of uh, uh, challenges or bureaucracies concerning concerning uh, concerning uh, project execution and stuff. At the same time, the the uh, the project itself being so strategic to the company to the country is being safeguarded by by having the major shareholder, uh, the ministry itself. Uh, the ministry gives the power in a sense and facilitates. The, the work of the company, but at the same time, the company is definitely uh, at all times we'd be working to achieve the government uh, strategic decisions and strategies in that regard. On the public sector here, we have different arms. We have the uh, the e-finance, e-finance and stuff, which provides and facilitates all the money related revenue collection and stuff like that. National Investment Bank, it's another, of course, uh, body in the in the government and the Egyptian company for investment provide security as it comes from uh, one of the major uh, national security uh, bodies in Egypt. So in that regard, this is MTS and we are targeted with the national single window. From a technical perspective, what are we targeted to do? Somebody would ask me, I'll put it simply in three little lines. We are, by number one, we are targeted or assigned to develop, operate and manage a centralized integrated electronic platform that would host, that would include all the Egyptian parties associated with cargo clearance. It's no longer customs authority as it started in 2010 or as 
many of us would think that the problem in cargo clearance or any uh, inconveniences or shortcomings uh, that are only are only uh, related to customs. In fact, reality uh, showed more than this, quite a lot more than this. So in our project, we are doing all our best, as you would see in the next few slides, to link, to integrate with all the parties who are concerned with cargo clearance. Now, if we do that, it happens so often, it happens so often that whatever you develop and build, no matter how good it is, unless you really cater, uh, cater for the uh, sustainability and the continuity of operation of such platform, it would certainly stumble and stop within a few a couple of years. It depends on how bad it was used or how good or how, how much you were ready for that. In this regard, the, 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 the project had to provide for, um, to, for uh, all the measures that were needed to make it happen and continue happening. The, the platform itself, the platform could be like hardware, network, and systems like that. However, what would these things do? Uh, we were targeted to provide automation services if needed, as and when needed, to the other governmental stakeholders, other, the other governmental bodies, to help them be on board of the platform. What do I mean by that? So if my box that came into the port a few days ago, suppose calls for the, for, for example, for the National Telecommunications Regulations Authority. I have phones, I have routers, I have computers and stuff like that. So, and by law, uh, uh, my shipping should be really uh, inspected or approved by the NTRA, as they call it. So the NTRA in this regard is a stakeholder that should be on board of, of, of the national single window platform so that you would be able to see the information and the documents and everything for itself and be able to lodge in its results, its recommendations, the pass, no pass, whether on the whole shipment or part of it, and maybe and, and at the same time put in instructions if needed, needs more documents and so forth. And at the end of the day, if it needs to collect money, for governmental revenues for the transaction it does, then it should have this uh, liberty to do it uh, in an electronic manner so that neither the trader would need to go or his broker would need to go. Uh, and the file, the physical file, doesn't have to travel to go for them to see and so forth. So it's quite challenging because uh, if you consider the stakeholders that play a role in, 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 in the clearance of my little box that I just happened to import from one country, there is a whole set of entities. To make this simple in, in the screen, we here we have the platform itself, all right, or the cloud, it's a private cloud, it's a government cloud. So in that case, it's not uh, public, it's, it's really safeguarded and secured, and it has very restrictions, a uh, very restricted manner to, uh, to, to make sure to authenticate the identity of the, uh, of the members and to help safeguard their information so that there's no foul up with this. On, this. on this platform in the middle, which I'm hovering on, I have three wings in it, three, three main parties. Beginning from the right, I have customs. So on this platform, actually, we are hosting the customs system. When I say custom system, I'm not referring to the current, the current system which might be working in Dekhela, it might be working in Safaga and Weba. I'm referring to these three in particular because most of the other sites have been replaced with a new system. Uh, custom system, uh, we are doing two things. We are modernizing their system into a centralized one. So the administration and the management of the system and the upgrade of the system and the control of the over the system would be very very easy and very very governed similarly we have we have here put hosted the information system of the general organization for export and import control short name GOIC. Uh, similarly they are a major uh, major uh, major major player after customs uh, customs is an uh, is an uh, in a sense a law execution agency so it does not uh, it does not uh, dictate anything by itself. Uh, dicta the, all the laws come from the various ministries and agencies in the, in the country. And these laws and regulations are programmed into the custom system so that when a shipment comes in, looking into the electronic books, they would see exactly what should happen to this shipment in terms of intervention by the, uh, 
by the other agencies. GOIC comes comes uh, one uh, as one of the major players in this regard because it used to have actually an overhand uh, over importation exportation in terms of industrial and or agricultural type of uh, commodities. And they would uh, actually intervene, they inspect and they sample the, in the region between 30 and 40 percent of the of the total shipments that come in. Uh, third here now with the new law that came in uh, to th 2017 to establish the National Food Safety Authority, NFSA for short, and uh, whose law was stipulated in 2017. Their bylaws were uh, actually published 2019 and they started actually operation in 2020. Right. In this regard, uh, MTS has be, is responsible for providing a full automation system for them to work in an integral manner and seamless manner along with GOIC and along with customs. Now, those three guys, uh, those three players are the major players. However, on the peripheral of my drawing here, my, 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 my diagram here, there is a lot of other uh, entities. Okay, some of them are in green, as you would see the NTRA, Enforcement Agency, one of the Minister of Interior, the drug informers, uh, the EDA now, there's now the EDA, the chemical administration, forgery and stuff. The green ones are, are uh, OGAs that are actually connected to the platform. We will see how this in detail in the next slide. The, the other ones in yellow, in yellow, uh, those ones in yellow are not contributing that much. So we, some of them are already connected, like for example, Al-Azhar, as I'm just looking into them, uh, not necessarily one by one. Uh, some of them are connected, yet they do re actually intervene at very, very, very minimal number of occurrences. We know we, in our design of the national single window to design the platform that would serve all those agencies, we had to be realistic. If, uh, if, if there is, let's say, five or six uh, partners actually working, working on the, on the clearance of a particular shipment, and each one of them has its own kind of uh, procedures and stuff. There is an interaction certainly between them. There is synchronization, there is timing, there is sequencing between those six in, my, in the case I'm, I'm describing. So if we would rely, if we would rely on uh, each party having an advanced system in a way or another to send and receive uh, electronic messages between each other, we can spend the whole day trying to figure out what needs to be done. Not to mention that with the thousands of declarations that we would process each day, the number of messages would be humongous. That would cause bottlenecks. So agencies will have bottleneck in receiving the queued messages and similarly in sending messages on their part. And that can cause chaos from one angle and can certainly uh, delay the cargo clear, lengthen the cargo clear, the clearance time. In this regard, to address that quite uh, pragmatically, we decided, we opted to do something that is actually not very frequent in other countries. We decided like, as, as, as you may be very well aware, there is a called port community systems, where it is, which is actually a system that would let all the port community, the operators, the, the cargo terminals, the stevedores, the transporters and stuff like that, the haulers and all these things to be running off, spinning, running off uh, centralized or one system. We did that on the other hand on the government side. We put customs, GOIC, and NFSA into directly bolted into the platform. They are working on one enterprise database so that there is no messaging whatsoever. All the actions that are taken by one party are directly visible, uh, felt, and seen by the other designated parties as, an, as per the procedures of those guys. These are the major players, and we relied on establishing integration with the ports authorities, like what you see here. Ports are, of course, divided into two categories. Some ports are under the, under the uh, jurisdiction of the Minister of Transport, here on the, on the blue side, and on the greenish side here, the Suez Canal Economic Zone, there are the six ports, as you would know. And so we establish uh, electronic integration with those guys. They have systems of their own, so we send and receive data from them. But as, as you would imagine, so the number, the quantity, and the frequency, and the volatility of the information that travels between uh, the port authority and customs GOIC and NFSA 
is limited. Why? Because the port would be basically, for example, uh, interested in uh, defining when the ship arrived, when it uh, departed. It would expect a manifest from customs. Uh, the uh, the uh, control terminals, the as the container terminals, or the stevedore companies would submit their uh, uh, what they call uh, load, <coughs> load and discharge. Excuse me, <coughs> load and discharge lists. So these happen once on a vessel, in a sense, uh, and then after that, it would be uh, customs sending uh, instructions to allow the clearance of a, of a particular cargo or part of it, and so forth. So. Uh, in, in these cases, we are relying on the electronic integration. A third part here in the integration, as you would see here, the government G2G services. There are there are major major players, uh, but they are like they are like uh, what do they call it? the unknown soldiers. Like uh, for example, I mean, an importer submits his documents. He has a taxation card. He has a commercial registry card and stuff like that. That needs to be validated and verified at the time of processing, all right? I don't need you to bring in a copy of something or bring me the original and then and make a copy of it and give it back to you. And uh, by all means, whatever you are presenting to me at the moment may not be actually correct or up to date. Why? You may have renewed something, your card, which you did not receive it yet. So you are presenting me with an older card, which is uh, uh, still valid or invalid or had the, does not have the up-to-date information that you should have submitted. So it would be mu must, must, uh, very, very beneficial to everybody to have online data verification, especially for the identity of the trade uh, partners in this regard. So with all these uh, big set of agencies, that defines the scope of the business coverage of NAFEZA. NAFEZA is an Arabic word for window. It's called NAFEZA, but we thought that it would be very difficult for somebody to read it with TH. Nafeta would be very tough, so we called it Nafeza. That's how the name came. So our boundary is encompassing all the agencies I just mentioned over the last 10 minutes. And in doing so, we here uh, really strive to achieve the following. We would like the importer, the trader, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on the import part, of course, at the moment, uh, in the stage to really to submit and lodge and uh, do the needful, do data entry, scan and do documents or whatever. We don't want him to see him going between offices or so. Then he has to, step number two, he, he needs to witness the, any inspection activity. That, if that is needed, he has to be there. So the container is opened, uh, the seal is broken and opened in front of his eyes. He's witnessing all that. And we don't need anything from him after that. We need him to go and pay the government dues at the, when the time comes, so he would be notified about the uh, at the right time with the right value with all the details that are needed. And then last here at fourth step four, he should go there to collect his goods and go. Uh, that of course is quite a big uh, a big change in the culture of people doing trade in Egypt. I mean the importers and the brokers and stuff like that, because those guys have to do a lot a lot of effort at the moment to do that. Our uh, platform on the geographical side, this is just a scheme, it's not a, a, full, a full scheme. It, may, it needs to reach all, all the ports, all the customs posts whereby cargo is traded, whether for importation, exportation, or even transit, whether inland or going across Egypt to other countries. So if, 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 if you imagine that you have such a platform as the heart and it's reaching with its limbs to all the places whereby uh, uh, ships would come or airplanes would come or whatever, the cargo would come and go, then in a sense, and you are working uh, actually electronically, you don't have physically to be there in any particular place, <clears throat> then uh, Egypt would be transformed into one, uh, one port. I can consider that uh, the, the map that you are seeing here, there is one big port here, including all these things. It, it's immaterial. The location is, is just the location where the box is stored. But as, other than that, it's immaterial. That's why Mr. Uh, Tariq actually was uh, putting his, uh, actually mentioned something that's very true. Uh, the government is so keen to see with the infrastructure and everything that else that's going in parallel to really transform Egypt into a real hub owing to the real great uh, geographic location it has and all the resources it has in terms of uh, 
in terms of human resources and our actual infrastructure as well. Now that was the uh, the opening. I'll go now deep into the now and the phaser system itself, if you would allow me. The single window in the trade across borders, I put a definition here so that everybody would really agree or we share the same vision on it and have because every word will be reflected in what we are going to develop or implement and do. So number one, as per the SCAP actually and the United Nations, WCO and all those guys, single point of entry that allows data to be electronically submitted once in a secured manner, of course, and to be processed and shared speedily, accurately between stakeholders with transparency. Uh, these all, all these things are real uh, major, 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 uh, major business objectives, major business objectives uh, that we would uh, really see into in, in, in the project. In this regard, there is a basic concept here that we have implemented from day one, which is the actually the uh, differentiation or the disintegration between the trade community as beneficiaries are as they, they are the ones who receive the service. They do are the ones who do the importation exportation. And on the other hand, the government, the government authorities that uh, take care of the clearance procedures for that. Uh, we don't want those guys to be really in the middle, caught in the middle. And in order to achieve this, we do things electronically via Nafesa. This is a symbolic thing for window, but of course it's not a window. Okay. Uh, uh, as Mr. Stark has mentioned in his opening speech, actually, uh, procedures, unfortunately, procedure importation clearance uh, and even export procedures are not unified across the various ports in Egypt, and hence that causes a lot of problems. Uh, the little schematic diagram that you see here, it is number one on the right, it's Alexandria. Regardless of going into the details, it, it you can notice that it's very long. I had to do it like a, like a like a little thing. It's a single single threaded. So if I do it all the way, it will be very long. It will go beyond my screen. And if you notice that the trader or the broker is a core element, a core element in each and every step in the way. Where I go to the airport, the diagram looks a little simpler. It goes a little shorter in terms of the number of steps, but yet everything is all the same. The trader, the broker is a core element in each step in the way. The colors here designate the different uh, parties, green is customs, uh, GOIC is, uh, is, 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 uh, is uh, red, the dark red, the uh, storage and warehouses container terms are in the, the drawings have been actually laid down without uh, putting the notion of uh, NFSA as well and all those of that. It gives just the idea of, of, of the main thing. Lengthy process, single threaded, no parallelism, and there is a common factor who is the trader and or the broker to get things done. In order to develop such a national single window, we had to re-engineer uh, all these procedures into one thing because at the end of the day, there is only one customs, there's only one GOIC, there's only one thing. So procedures should be the same regardless of the different business cases that such systems need to address. So with the process engineering, we introduced something here. As you would notice, it's simpler, clearer to read. Now there's another concept, the occurrence of the trader and or the broker now it was limited into four occurrences here in this diagram, one, two, three, four, and there are parallel, parallel operations here. So this means that there is a, there are one point of entry, then things go different ways to come back again, and then uh, something happens here, and then you do one thing and get your, your goods out. This is, this is actually what we had to undertake, and uh, these colors again represent customs, GOIC, NFSA, and stuff like that. And you'll see that in the in the future. In order to put it in a more uh, uh, clear way, I put even the uh, descriptions on the on the proceed of the processes that I was putting as uh, circles and in, in the previous slide. And you would see that for yourself when I submit all the document after the meeting, you'd be able to see exactly what we meant. Uh, actually, the, the guy has to lodge in his information, has to witness in the middle here the inspection, all right, and he has to uh, actually uh, pay the money. And, and collect, pay the money here in the one in black, and then he has to, I should have put him here as well, and then he has to collect his uh, uh, clearance document and go out. In the middle in the procedures doesn't mean that everybody is living in his own island. There is 
direct interaction between customs and the OGAs. So whoever has any, whoever, any party that has a comment that will impact, can certainly impact the other entity. This is all taken care of in terms of the actually direct integration owing to the fact that they are running, spinning off the, uh, the platform itself. There's integration is instantaneous as they work on one and a single database. In order for the guy here in the middle uh, to witness his inspection, it is uh, preceded by a step here that is taken care of by, by MTS or by the NAFISA system, which is to set an appointment, collective appointment uh, from, uh, from the different OGAs and customs to witness the inspection event itself in order to open the container one time and everybody will do his homework and then the container is closed until everybody goes back to his place to continue on working. And then at the end of the day, there will be a consolidated invoice, the one that I'm moving here. So when, it, when, it, when everybody has been satisfied and the, all the decisions have been made, you can go and pay once uh, at the bank uh, with one big, one lengthy invoice that has all the details in it. So you pay once and then you get a single document that uh, gives you the approval, the, uh, in a sense, uh, the approval of all, which means all the OGAs have approved of your uh, cargo clearance. You don't need any additional stamps or signatures on your cargo clearance form. That is, that's what we were looking into. On, on, uh, how would we do that? We had first thing here, a data center that's hosted somewhere in 6th of October, and it's backed up, uh, backed up on an active active, meaning uh, they are synchronized at all times. There is disaster recovery in somewhere else in, uh, in uh, New Cairo, all right? And this, as I said earlier, this is an enterprise database that what you, you can see here. And it's put, I put here different colors to designate that there are different parties who are putting their information in that database, all right? This is to designate different servers. So we are putting here the GOIC system, the NFC system, the custom system. And uh, if you remember in the opening slides, I mentioned that one of the main aspects in a national single window is to have an enterprise risk management system. This is the one here that's marked in red to designate that we have a big engine that would, uh, would do the uh, risk management and risk assessment uh, necessary. We'll get that into further details down the line. On board of this, we have, of course, this platform. It's not for the trader to go in there or to ask or do anything else. You have, uh, you have the e-portal, which is connected to that. And at the same time, you have what they, we used to call the, I say used to call the logistic service centers. These are building facilities, which MTS was, uh, uh, is, in, uh, is uh, responsible for establishing and uh, establishing at the various ports. And not only at design at the ports, there's one that be in the 6th of October, 10th of Ramadan. We have one here in Heliopolis, Cairo. In order, to, these are uh, outlets in a sense, that would allow the trader or the broker to submit his data and documents and or receive his clearance documents or any other documents that he would uh, receive from the transaction uh, through that, through these, uh, through these facilities. So actually the trader in this case can either be on, on, on the portal or go physically, and we'll get to that into the detail via the logistic service center. Now, the system here that we have put in uh, 6th of October has an integration layer, which of course connects to the e-finance gateway for the payment via the banks, all right? And it is connected to the port authorities, as I mentioned earlier. It is connected to the taxation authority and the commercial register to do the validation. It's connected to the traffic department to send the clearances of vehicles. And here, one thing here I call here GS1 Egypt. This is an international body that is uh, responsible for uh, registering products and companies and assigning uh, product uh, product codes with the, the things that you would see on, on, on a package that you would buy from a supermarket or a pharmacy or whatever, they, they call them the GS1. They are covering a whole lot, about 60 to 70% of the finished products in the world. Uh, they, they provide a standard uh, mechanism for, uh, for registering uh, products. However, uh, there are, of course, there's a lot of other standards uh, depending on the industry. For example, vehicles has, has a separate thing and all this sort of, this does not matter. Part number, GS1 code or whatever uh, that is necessary. We link 
with GS1 code though for one reason, so that when an import when an import declaration is uh, lodged, and it says that uh, on the commercial invoice I'm importing uh, uh, a product uh, code one two three four five six seven, and this happens to be a GS1 code. I can really through the integration that I'm mentioning here, I can get all the details, technical details about the product. So this information is available at the device uh, with the customs officer, so he would. He would and certainly understand what this is product. This product is from all the details. If it is a food product, it can tell them the ingredients, where it's where it's manufactured, all sorts of things. And uh, so that is why we have this sort of integration. We have another layer here to the left, which is here interface, not called integration, it's called interface. Uh, parties that do not have uh, that do not have uh, computer systems or have proprietary systems which do not mix with others, like for the security security departments and stuff like that. We, de we devise here, we develop, we develop uh, interface applications, I mean screens and provide them screens and printers, scanners, whatever it takes, so that they can see for themselves the data and the documents, digitized documents at real time, and then they can put in and they can process the, 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 the transaction that is showed before them to put in their decisions and, as I said, uh, put the remarks and request their uh, uh, revenues if it, if, if it is the case. Uh, here, this platform is connected to all the ports, all the sites where, where cargo will come in and go out here on the left. And at the same time, if you look at this database, this database becomes like a pot a repository that that would that really stores the stores the complete picture of the trip of the container from the moment it landed here at the port until it left the gate because all the parties have put in the information and their actions and did all the things so we have the complete story the complete film of each and every uh, shipment that would have come into Egypt regardless to the port that being said this is a wealth of information that the country the government would rely on. So then in the decision making centers, the data that's in this repository is sliced and diced to, to provide the different ministries uh, for to, to obtain the information that you need for them to process, maybe for analytical reasons or any other ways, we do not uh, intervene. But at least there's one sole single source of the truth uh, when it comes to a shipment. Nobody will say the shipment was for somebody called Gamal Qutb and somebody else would say, no, say, no, no, it's Gamal Mohammed Qutb or he's, uh, no, nobody says that. No, it's, uh, no, the document that were lodged, it said Gamal M. Qutb, so all the parties that were involved will see this name with this number, with this value, with this whatever. So the data is unified across all, all the ministries and the agencies. And that is a blessing in itself because Actually, Egypt used to suffer when it comes to statistics and stuff like that. Statistics vary differently between agencies, and that was owing to the fact that each each authority had its own system. Some of them may not as complete. Some of them may not capture all the data as others. Somebody may not be synchronized at all times, so he sees data at uh, stage one. He doesn't see it all the way until the end. All these type of uh, of uh, of problems, of course, impact on the quality of the data that is to be produced in their statistics. This is a sample screenshot of the portal that we have that's in Arabic. We have put the, 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 uh, the portal in Arabic and English. We're working on both, all right, to provide uh, more clarity and transparency to parties who are interested, non-Arabic speakers. Uh, um, these are samples. This uh, screen shows you a sample of the uh, uh, trade community services that we put in a, in, a, in a mobile mobility solutions, whether tablets, computers, or mobile phones or kiosks, we have a lot of lot of services that we provide. These are sample screens of what we provide. Number here on the left, we use Microsoft Kaizala, which is like WhatsApp for business. We provide we communicate with the trader and and or the broker with the events as they progress on e each and every transaction of the person uh, here. Uh, in this service, the the broker or the trader, whoever uh, downloads the uh, Nafeza application, whether on iOS or Android, has the capability have the capability to go in and check on a spe specific HS code to see what are the rules and regulations pertaining to that tariff code. Here, one this one tells you exactly the status of a specific 
declaration, the number, what it is, the, the, the current status, uh, who is the, uh, of course, the name of the, uh, the name of the registered importer on it, the bill of lading number, the customs regime, whatever, who has presented the, the declaration to customs, the date and time, the date of the inspection and so forth, provides you all the details of that. And this one provides you details of the tariff code. This one is for the those guys who go to the uh, uh, logistics centers. You may happen to have more than one logistics center in a city, like in Cairo. As I said, we have one at the airport. We have here one in Heliopolis. So if you are driving, you are planning to go there to submit your documents, you can use the uh, this application, which is connected to the queuing system at all the, all the sites, all the logistic uh, centers we have developed. It gives you the status, tells you how many are in queue, the average time, average service time today, how many ones are ahead of you, and so forth. And you can pick, of course, the site from the Google map and can tell you all the, uh, all the it gives you the directions and give you the status of that thing. Now, there's uh, one thing, again, outside the procedures themselves, evaluation has always, is always a headache between the trader and customs. The trader sees that customs exaggerates and uplifts all the values, and the and customs says that no, the trader is not clear enough or is not telling the whole truth. So then there is a whole Tom and Jerry type of uh, game between them, and that causes a lot of problems. If you look at this screen here, I'm 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 just saying that we have Cairo Airport, for example, and it has a lot of valuators here, and then Damietta has another set of valuators at Damietta, Sochna, and so forth. And these little words, I mean, there's other sites. I'm just mentioning a few of the main sites. All these sites are connected to the platform, the central platform that we have. Now, at, at the bottom here, we have two sites, one of them in, in, in Heliopolis, which we call, it's a VIP center. This center is, is, is established to help the VIP uh, customers uh, so that they can, uh, they can really uh, uh, get, the, the, get their um, declarations and cargo clearance expedited. Uh, these are usually uh, either authorized economic operators or uh, traders with high volume of imports. So then they deserve to be uh, well catered for so that they can get the service that they want. And the one here in Tehran Center, this is a new building under now, under, under not construction, under uh, refurbishment and setting and furniture and stuff like that. That will be another center. The idea is the following. Rather than having resources at each and every site when it comes to valuation and prices and tariffs and stuff like that scattered here. Some sites are heavy loaded, some others are not as heavily loaded. So the idea is to do the following. We will move, the, in a sense, move, logically, move those guys from there. There will be central valuation and tariff centers here and there, and there will be, of course, few more. It's not going to be two only. And these centers will be staffed will be staffed with the uh, 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 evaluators and tariff uh, tariff managers. So the two major steps in customs, these are, uh, uh, th those will be the guys in there. They are not a logistic service centers any longer. And there will be a system, an intelligence system, that would have profiles on the experience, the years of experience, the commodity type of experience of a valuator, how much successful or unsuccessful he was in doing the valuation and so forth, in order for any declaration that would be lodged for at any port, regardless, you don't have to see the physical the evaluator at, in Alexandria. You may have some, who's somebody who's much more experienced somewhere else. So now, so now all the valuation and, and tariff operation will be done centrally. So then the ports will really be points of, uh, in a sense, cargo inspection and clearance. The port will become an entry point uh, be uh, for, uh, between uh, uh, airborne or seaborne cargo and hinterland. There will no need to, for time to be wasted in uh, paperwork and do procedures that take lengthy time inside the port itself. We will have better usage of our resources no matter where they are, because it's a centralized, uh, centralized system that does the job. And it will do it in an intelligent manner to do so. In this regard, by the way, we have started, we have experimented this in a semi-automated manner. In other words, we witnessed at one point in time when we started in Alexandria, there was a backlog at the uh, evaluator's offices. So it was very uh, simple. Uh, these, the, some of the declarations that were in a sense uh, delayed in Alexandria were diverted or routed to uh, other uh, other evaluators 
like in the airport, like in another seaport like Sokhna, to take care of the valuation and the and the tariff uh, revision on it. So the for, 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 from the trader standpoint in Alexandria, he had he had his declaration processed and cleared rather than staying uh, staying and and uh, staying in customs in Alexandria for one or more days unnecessarily. That that is one of the directions that customs is doing, and with the owing with the system, we will uh, we will be able to do that in a smart manner. This screen just tells you something. When I was talking about the GS1, the GS1 uh, database for products, uh, the one I'm watching here, GS1 code five double four nine whatever zero uh, four six. When we investigate about the, it's the first time to come to us. This product has never been imported into to us before, so we inquire through uh, with the integration with the GS1. It calls for in databases internationally to 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 answer back with all the details. The category, the product name, the description, the functional name, the whatever storage instructions, the net weight, whatever country of origin, and so forth. This data is stored into the Nafesa database so that whenever this item with this GS1 code comes back again, uh, the customs and everybody will know what it is without further asking. So we are, the, in a sense, uh, developing, developing uh, uh, an intelligent database for the products and, of course, each product, whenever it comes, of course, the customs declaration includes its price. So there will be uh, 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 an, uh, an integrated, in a sense, uh, evaluation database. But it's not on the on, on on a tariff code. I'm not talking about a computer that is worth a thousand dollar or two thousand dollars. I'm talking about the, for example, the IBM Lenovo GSY six six six, whatever. That was the one thousand dollar thing. So customs officers will have very clear, very clear information, pricing information, owing to the fact that uh, information is coming at the commodity level, at the product level itself. Now, having said that, uh, we have wealth, as I said, wealth of information. How can I move forward? How can I see if I'm good or bad? Then I need to measure. I cannot control something that I cannot measure, of course, as you would know. I need to lose a couple of pounds, actually more than a couple of pounds. <laughs> I need to put myself on the scale to be able to see how far and what I need to do. All right, in this regard, this is a sample shot of the early screens that we have in the system. The system monitors the performance, whether the performance in cargo clearance, whether the performance of the officers, whether the uh, performance at the cargo type level, the uh, performance of the OGAs, what did inter -A do, how did the Ministry of Health do, all these things are monitored and the reports are being uh, used by the Ministry of Finance and Customs and GOIC and all the others in order to really monitor and see how they can really improve. With this, I close the discussion on the uh, NAFESA. And NAFESA, of course, is the foundation now, the platform with the system. These are the foundation for anything else to happen. What could possibly happen? Either something that happens before the goods arrive or something that would happen after goods are cleared, because NAFESA is now involved, from what I said about, is involved into taking care of the goods as they arrive into the port. Now, the third part, which is the subject of, to, of today, which is the uh, advanced cargo information. Uh, yep. I'll, I'd like to share with you uh, like a two minute thing about uh, that we put up to, to, to say the truth. It's in Arabic, unfortunately, the English will come today. Sorry. Engineer Gamal, there is no sound. There is no sound to the video, please. If you should, or there is no sound. 
broken again. Do you hear me now? Yes, you we hear, hear you, but we hear you, but not the video. Ah, all right. I I, I don't think I have uh, an upper hand on that, of course. <laughs> hmm. But I can hear it myself because it's on my computer. So I'll I'll, I'll bypass that. It's again, it's a few seconds more that would have uh, concluded it, and I'll, uh, I'll I'll pass the link to you so that you can really see it because we have a YouTube channel, YouTube channel through which you can really see for yourself. Do you hear me now? We are back. We're back to the uh, presentation. Okay. No, not not now, very clear. Uh, I'd like. Excuse me. No, no. Now we hear you, but we didn't hear the presentation. That's all. Ah. Uh, do you see the screen, the presentation screen, for the the white screen, system yes. overview? Yes. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. I'll, I'll I'll proceed now. As for the uh, video clip, I'll I'll pass the uh, URL for it so that you can see it for yourselves. And as I said, the English version of it, we should receive it today. We were just uh, we just received the final uh, comments from customs for, for the Arabic version a couple of days ago. So the English one will come come uh, hopefully today, as I said. All right, uh, advanced cargo information actually is talking about uh, the government or the designated uh, parties to get information about the cargo before shipping it from the port of export. All right. So, uh, in doing so, why why would the government here or customs or whatever need to know that? They need to assess the uh, potential risks of the shipments that are bound to Egypt. This is not something that, of course, that Egypt has come up with. It's a standard thing. It started since the uh, uh, 2001 events in the U.S. And then the uh, U.S. Uh, devised the standard to secure its, its uh, borders and stuff like that against terrorism and stuff. And then the WC uh, embraced that uh, under the name of SAFE, safe, uh, SAFE Agreement, and uh, from which ACI is a core element. If you dig up uh, SAFE, um, SAFE Framework, WCO SAFE Framework, you will see, you will see uh, the ACI as the main the foremost component of that. So the, uh, the Egyptian authorities would like to know about the fact it has nothing to do with value or tariff uh, or uh, value or, or, or origin or whatever. It needs to know exactly what are the commodities that are subject to be imported to Egypt for them to, uh, to take action against. Uh, when you do something, at the end of the day, will, most probably they will say, OK, go ahead. But at least they knew it beforehand. Now it helps in two things. Knowing, knowing what's coming in here, that would help port authorities to really get ready uh, about handling uh, all the cargo that's upcoming. And at the same time, customs and all the other agencies would know exactly what they need to do, would need to do when the good, when goods arrive to the port. Now, that is the, usually the typical or elementary purpose of the ACI. Uh, now, the World Customs Organization and everybody else and I have the common sense actually say, well, okay, if I know the information of the cargo that's coming ahead of time, why don't I go ahead to facilitate the trade by the fact that I can really go ahead with the procedures, I can even pay the dues, I make the declaration, I can pay the dues and everything else. So when the shipment comes in actually at the port, if it was not sub sub subject to any inspection, I can actually load it. It could be discharged from the vessel onto my truck and then I can leave. And if there is an inspection, then by all means, let's do it. They do the inspection and then I go my things and go. All right. So in our case, the implementation of the ACI system as an integral part, again, of NAFISA, it will aims at achieving two things, the risk management and trade facilitation as well. I say integral manner because the output of the ACI is definitely the input to the uh, NAFISA system itself as it handles the data upon arrival. OK. Uh, however, uh, in order in order in order to really be a user of the ACI system, which is the direction of the government, in April, which is uh, next month, we will start doing implementation, real implementation and stuff. 
and this implementation will be in a sense in a sense in a gradual and experimental manner uh, to be actually finalized within two months to start to be obligatory uh, on all parties all importers as of first of july uh, these dates and times have been actually uh, in, uh, I wouldn't say imposed, have been dictated on us, our constraints upon which we are working. These are the government uh, actually target dates for implementing the system. Now, in this slide, I'd like to highlight five major things. Now, in order for the government authorities to know exactly about the shipment that is coming, then we need to know, the, the, Egyptian, the authorities would need to know who the importer is, who the exporter is, who the notified party is, if there is a notified party in the case. Now, uh, typically, uh, it happens in so many uh, so many countries, importer, exporter might be identified by his name and maybe address. The name might be actually, people could be meticulous or could be less meticulous. So when, I, when we talk about the ACI here in our case, importer will be identified with his uh, taxation registration number here in Egypt. So, uh, so all the... Uh, all the transactions will be registered with a proper identified number, which is validated, as I mentioned earlier, if you remember, uh, it will be validated online via the taxation authority. We would inquire, is this valid card? Is, is it? Okay. As for the exporter, he's a non-Egyptian, of course. Uh, exporters, rather than calling names John Smith and Sons, which actually might be... I meaningless. I don't know. It could be more than one John, uh, John Smith and Sons. He will be he uh, the company with the exporting company or the shipper will be identified by his company registration number. That be a commercial register or a taxation ID. Uh, we, we don't we, we do not uh, actually make a difference. Uh, he will be identified with that. So his name will always be tied and associated with that number, so that the authorities here would know that this shipment whether it was good or bad, by the way, uh, that it came from that party to that party. So when if, I if I talk about risk and if the parties, whether the importer and the exporter are always like clean sheet, but we know exactly that this particular exporter is not something who carried somebody who carried a similar name. No. So it, it plays role both ways. It depends. Uh, it, it depends for statistics per statistical purposes, for risk management and for everything else and even for valuation. The value of the commodity that's coming from this party, from uh, exported from this company, is always around that. How did I come with that? Because I have clear data with really pinpointing, with accurate, precise uh, uh, the, uh, quality of data. Then we can really come up to something that we can rely on. Second item here is that uh, commodities, uh, uh, commercial invoices, traditionally here, I have been here with the Egyptian customs since uh, 1998. In Egypt, before that, I was in other countries, and uh, and and the commercial invoices here in Egypt uh, were not clear. We're, we're really not serving the purpose. It can say I'm doing, for example, uh, kitchen utensils. What does kitchen utensils mean? Uh, it could be knives, forks. What, uh, what what kind of things are we talking about? So now with the ACI and actually and, and customs it well it, it it happened to be the trigger to really kind of uh, do this uplift in our uh, in data quality effort in the, in the, in the, in the country here. Uh, commercial invoices have to be detailed. When I go and buy from the supermarket, it doesn't tell me I give you dairy products at uh, 100 bucks. It tells me you have yogurt, you have milk, you have whatever, cheese, whatever. Uh, so each commodity will be uh, mentioned, specified on the commercial invoice. And in order to mention something, a commodity, you don't tell me, uh, for example, uh, uh, feta cheese, low fat, uh, 10, whatever, 10% 10 uh, salinity or whatever. No, you'll tell me a part number or commodity number or GS1 number. One, two, three, four, five. So whenever this commodity comes again, we know exactly what it is. So that can help even somebody like NFSA or if it was have been industrial, go with what, what to do and what to how to handle this type of commodity in terms of sampling in terms of physical inspection and so forth. Third item, and it's important, that information uh, should be uh, submitted by the importer or his broker directly 
we don't want people to go and mess around and really feel bad going and standing in queues, especially with the COVID-19 and stuff like that, going to logistic service centers. We would like to see the trader himself hopping on the portal, having his uh, identity, of course, uh, verified and has his, uh, his own account. He can go in and can really do uh, data entry. He can really upload the uh, documents of the uh, declaration and uh, send it to Nafeza, to Customs, GUIC, and everybody else. This is the role of Nafeza. But then in, in order for him to send documents, he would be using the e-tokens the, because the e-tokens, would, would he has to co-sign the documents. So the documents will arrive at Nafeza with a digital signature at the bottom of it or in part of the document itself, which gets validated by the Ministry of uh, Telecommunications. So you say, yes, this is the per this is signed by that person. It is authentic signature. Then customs can deal with that digitized copy of the document as if it were original. Although nobody came, nobody gave him a piece of document at all. Nobody went to the logistic center. So the, the customs officer, the GOIC officer, the whoever officer is seeing to himself data and documents on the screen. He can print the document. He can deal with it and do the processing necessary. If there's something wrong and it's calling for a penalty, assuming, for example, owing to the fact that the document is co-signed at the bottom, the penalty will be imposed on the whoever, the, 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 the guy who did the foul thing, because the, now the digital signature uh, carries the legal, uh, uh, legal uh, what do, I, I don't know how to say it, the legal status that would uh, allow the authorities to take the proper action without needing the documents themselves. Now, fourth item, which is important in the ACI uh, system, is that we would like to go further, further than that. We would like to reach the outside world rather than, uh, rather than the export, the shipper sending the invoice by courier, or doing endorsing and pen, going through the, the Chamber of Commerce, the embassy, and then courier to come here to the bank and the bank to the, to the trader, then the trader to come in to lodge the thing and can waste a lot, a lot of time. We would like for the shipper or the transporter to send the documents and the data, the shipment data to Egypt electronically. So in order to do that in a safe manner, we uh, are utilizing the blockchain technology, which is, a tech, which is a techno the, major, the main technology that actually was used, is used for cryptocurrency and Bitcoins and stuff like that, uh, due owing to the fact that it is, it is secure. So we would like to see the trader sending all this such information via blockchain to arrive to us in Nafeza, and then we can notify everybody uh, beginning from the trader. The trader has to say he, he will have, he has to look into what arrived under his name to endorse it, to say, yes, I do accept this document. I, yes, it is my document. This is my data. Dip, and he signs on it, then customs can really start processing it. Although there is no document in place at all. So uh, we would obtain information from the source. I mean, the shipper and or the transporter. And on the other side, the uh, data and the documents are not come to us in different formats. Uh, invoices, bills of and bills of lading, we would like, we will see them coming electronically. What do I mean by that? I, I wouldn't wish to receive, let's say, for example, a 10 page commercial invoice. Uh, it's a digitized, it's a PDF file that includes all the details that uh, pertain to that shipment. We would like to receive the invoice in an electronic manner so that I can read it put it into the database of Nafeza so that customs and all the other parties can start processing it based on the electronic that data came in. There are two benefits to, to that. Number one, that it was faster, cleaner. It's coming from the source, so uh, nobody has to fiddle with it. It's authentic as far as the government agencies here are concerned. Third, and it doesn't have any typos, any uh, errors, not including everything and so forth. And, 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 and most of all, one major thing in the traditionally, as I speak today, even in Nafesa today, in the places where we operate, when uh, when the guy goes into the logistic service center and submits the paper documents, and of course, data entry is done, whether by him on the portal or by our staff in the front desk, actually, and, and the transaction gets 
processed, who can give me the guarantee that the data that the officer is seeing into his screen is matching exactly the physical copy of the document that he sees on his screen as well? I can see a PDF file of my invoice. I did not check as an officer. I will certainly, I will not check line by line to make sure that the data on my screen is credible and then I can say yes, no, or do whatever. There might be, there might be, there might be mistakes that go uh, un, un, unnoticed. There might be intentional mistakes that go unnoticed and that would result in uh, revenue leakage as far as government is concerned. So by receiving the invoice and, and the, the invoice electronically, then I don't need the document at all to tell the truth. I don't need it because we have one sole version of the, of the invoice. This is it. The, the shipper sent this information. Mr. Trader, Mr. Broker, Mr. Officer, Mr. X. This is the, this is the invoice. It's coming and it is correct. So uh, we rely on the invoices to be electronic. When it comes to the bill of lading, it's the same thing to, to expedite the process. Plus the fact that manifests and bills of lading have been electronically exchanged, have been into this, into this realm uh, years and years ago. When, when we were in Sokhna, we were the first one, we implemented the EDI in, in, in Egypt here. We were re receiving bills of lading electronically. So we should make use of this and we should rely on the electronic data of the bill of lading. Now there's one benefit in doing this because when I receive the bill of lading before, before the ship departs, as part of the, uh, as I said, the, measure, the uh, risk uh, assessment uh, part that the authorities here will take care of, we would be able to really do an automatic uh, uh, cross-check when the manifest comes in here and it's submitted by the shipping line, shipping agent. I see that it was sent with from Mr. X to Mr. Y and this port and this number with this container number, this and that, and the final bill of lading that has been submitted upon arrival of the vessel here to Alexandra Seaport, for example, there is some difference. There is uh, one container that is less, the container number is not the same, so that the authority or the officer would know exactly if there's something in such case, and then he would decide what, what is the way to handle uh, what is needed to do that. So from a, from a governance standpoint, it does not call for any uh, human intervention to, to do checking and then he may be at times faulty, he may not be that accurate and so forth. Time. So these are main characteristics of the ACI system, which will I explain now in here. It's, it all starts within, uh, we call it the, uh, the ACI application form. So the trader would lodge in, would go into the portal, uh, uh, access uh, the portal using his token so that his data is, is legally binding to him. He will give us uh, uh, basic information about the shipment again. So his credentials are passed and, uh, and, and validated by the tax authority and the CR authority. Because why? Because these documents are important for any trader to do a trade business to begin with. So these are customs laws actually. And then he would uh, mention the bank that through which he'll have an LG or whatever, and then he will put the shipment details. All the data that goes in simply into, into this form will be assessed by the risk management system. As I said, not for valuation or anything else, it's for risk only. And it, out of it will come what we call it the ACID, the asset number. It is a unique number for your request for shipment. This shipment, each shipment, will be uniquely identified by the asset. Somebody would ask me why, why what, what's, what, what's the significance of, of that? As I said, since we are going to receive data and documents, PDF files from the outside world for all the ports here in Egypt, I don't know the, the, the invoice that I just received, electronically received from Korea. I don't know whose shipment this is. Maybe that trader, maybe I find that I know of the trader, but uh, that trader had five POs coming, coming at the same time. I don't know, this invoice pertains to which shipment in particular. So in that regard, the ACID is stipulated on all the documents and data that would come so that the system, NAFISA system, can automatically grab the data or grab the PDF file, do the needful to validate it as far as syntax and everything is concerned, and put it into the right place into the database of NAFESA so that it becomes available 
to the to the to the trader if he'd like to do anything further on it or to the customs officer it depends on who the beneficiary is as per the procedures when the ACID is generated I need to mention here notifications go to the importer although he's the one who is hopping but it could be actually a broker on my, on my behalf has been doing this so he, the, the broker will get the uh, the the notion the importer will get to him by emails the exporter who has been accurately specified on the form not by the name but by the taxation number and this and that we are composing a database of the exporting parties who do business with us one incrementally as they would come so that we can communicate through the official mail that is associated to their account to say mr mrs thompson whatever if that is the company name uh, dear mr thompson uh, this is to notify you. I'm not saying the I'm not uh, saying the exact words. Uh, Mr. X, Y, and Z from Egypt, taxation number one, two, three, four, five, is uh, has declared that he has a shipment with you upcoming based on a PO number, PO date that was on the application uh, with the general description of the commodity. All right, uh, please. Uh, this uh, this assignment, uh, this shipment has been assigned an ACID number two five six seven da 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 da. Please make sure that this number is stipulated on all the documents uh, that you will send uh, to NAFESA uh, in, in, in relation to that shipment. OK, time. The site uh, here is Gamal, brief. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we need to leave some time for the uh, for the questions. So uh, can you give us like an overall uh, conclusion? I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, I see a lot of questions sure. and we we have we need time for questions. Thank you. OK, uh, thank you, sir. I'll, I'll, I'll have I have just two or three more slides. I'll, I'll do it so fast. So the idea is to really uh, do uh, an early declaration by the importer. Uh, notifications will go to the bank for the LG and for the foreign exporter, the transporter. Data will be sent, as you would see here, via the blockchain to come to Nafesa. That will notify the importer, of course. And then you can, if you wish, if the trader would wish, Upon receiving this information early on, he can proceed with customs, GOIC and NFSA. They can do all the early work, document uh, review and everything else. They can do the evaluation based on what he declared so that he can make the payment, as I said. So by the time the vessel comes in, the vessel comes in, then he is ready to get his things out if they were not subject to any further detail. There is uh, there are time constraints in here uh, as per the customs the customs uh, regulations that are imposed that are dictated here the uh, the draft bill of lading has to uh, be sent by the transporter from abroad to egypt 48 hours at no later than uh, 48 hours prior to ship uh, vessel departure so that it, they would have the time to say yes or no if there's anything that of that sort needs the final bill of lading, of course, we'd expect that within 24 hours after vessel departure. So this is the real official bill of lading that would be uh, issued. Similarly, at, when the vessel comes in close prior to arrival in, in Egypt, no later than 48 hours, the cargo, the full cargo manifest of the, the cargo on board that will be discharged in Egypt needs to be submitted by the shipping agent. Block number one here, which I mentioned, can repeat as many times if the vessel would, would stop in one or more port. So any port that will be shipping anything to Egypt has to send the draft bill of lading to 48 hours and 24 hours after that. OK, if you look into what I said, you will find that out of the standards that I mentioned, we will have covered most of this. I put the red in here. I mean, it's a paperless environment. I, 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 the run times fast. We will have eliminated a whole lot of number of doc paper documents. However, not all of them. So that I put it in a distinguished manner, standardized documents and data. We are using the standards. However, Egypt may have its own data, additional data requirements. So that may be not be recognized as pure standard in terms of WCO. In order, I would invite, I would advise that uh, the traders in the audience here, brokers or importers or whatever, they would need to really get ready. I don't mean to operate using ACI. I need to get ready in order for you to operate at one point in time. You need to be ready. Ready by the fact that you need to register on the NFESA portal. You need as a company to have an account on the portal. You have to nominate the staff members in your organization who 
would be authorized. They need to be all uh, uh, mentioned and, and uh, stipulated so that when you go, you come in, you have everything ready for you. And uh, as well, you need to go ahead and uh, uh, obtain obtain uh, digital signature tokens, the e-tokens, to each member of your organization who would deal with Nafesa portal, because that is the way we would authentically know exactly who the identity of the uh, uh, of, of the of the person uh, dealing with the Nafesa itself. And uh, at the end, and in the end, your cargo, your uh, exporter, the shipper from abroad, the 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 entity that you deal with need to really register itself on the uh, on the blockchain that we are using, which is called Cargo X. You need to register. The exporter needs to register to Cargo X so that he has a mechanism to send all the documents and information uh, via the blockchain in a secure manner, which we can really receive and do. OK, uh, with that, uh, I conclude my presentation and uh, thank you for uh, listening. I'll be open to uh, questions. If we have too many questions, we can always write them and when we can handle them, as I said earlier. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Engineer Gamal, for this uh, detailed and insightful presentation. I mean, uh, it really shows uh, how it's, it's complicated uh, customs is. And I think it's, uh, it, it's all, all everywhere in the world, it's, it's the same, but uh, hopefully with Nafisa, things will become easier. Uh, we have, of course, a lot of questions, but uh, the first uh, question is, uh, as a German exporter sending shipments to Egypt, are there any actions we have to fulfill? Or is it the forwarder and, the, or, and or the importer of the goods who have to act on the platform? So as uh, foreign, foreign exporters, do they have to uh, register directly on the platform or it's through the forwarder? No, uh, the, uh, the two parties we would, we would seek from, uh, in, uh, for the, the German exporters, the exporter himself has to send us the documents, as I said, via the blockchain. So all he has to do is to register uh, on CargoX platform. You will have the URLs and everything else so that uh, he can send the data and, and the documents, uh, send them like email, actually. They will come to it will be an easy, an easy interface. So he can send the documents to us. The other party we are seeking are the, is the transporter. If so, if my cargo that will be coming from Germany is coming on uh, on uh, CMA uh, on CMA uh, ship, so the uh, the shipping agent uh, or the freight forwarder who is taking care of the shipment will need to send us the bill of lading uh, as customs uh, requested uh, over the blockchain as well. Uh, okay, and, and there is also a question about the uh, the documents. I mean, if 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 all the documents are being sent via Cargo X, for example, the uh, the, the certificate of origin, uh, will it have yes. to be uh, will it have to be uh, registered at the Egyptian embassy at the port of loading or or not? Mm. No, no, no. In doing so, well, actually, uh, that has been discussed and uh, and done. No, it does not. That that won't be necessary at all. Okay, thank you. And uh, and also to implementing all this uh, locally. I mean, uh, how do you uh, uh, foresee uh, overcoming the resistance from the current customs employees? Because I, and as we are now in the trial uh, in the trial phase, I see a lot of uh, resistance from the current customs employees. Uh, uh, number one, we are working hand in hand with the customs authority. Uh, in fact, actually, Mr. Shahad Ratwari, who is the uh, second man in line in customs, uh, was supposed to come here, but he was a little bit uh, sick this morning, so he apologized. Uh, uh, the resistance, uh, of course, is uh, we expected that, and that's part of the change. Usually, change comes associated with that. However, we are in a much different spot. Uh, as compared to as we started in March 2019, uh, uh, we are addressing it uh, um, with the by using what I want to say is by using uh, I wouldn't say orientation sessions and um, I would say rehabilitation, but awareness, bringing the awareness and the value of things. I mean, now they are the 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 officers are actually operating on the Nafisa system in the 
the seven or eight sites that we are operating in are doing much, much better. The last of which was Alexandria. Alexandria is the biggest, of course. And then it, uh, it was kind of uh, totally new to them. So part of it was anxiety of dealing with something new that took part. Some of them are not happy. They're used maybe quite uh, happy with the way things are it's stable. I got used to it. That has to change because um, we are not looking. Uh, MTS by the end of the day is an executing arm. It is not the. I'm not the one who is giving or putting the laws or giving the clearance at, at all. At all. Uh, uh, the government has very uh, uh, far-fetched objectives out of all this. So we are trying to make traders' lives easier, brokers' lives easier, really, and again giving the credit to those who are compliant, who are really transparent, putting everything in clarity. They are the ones who would benefit most. There would be still there still be those transactions that will be not be as in a sense um, organized. These will be subject to lengthier periods because of the fact that that would call for heavy intervention from the authorities that are designated into this, and that would cause delays in the clearance time. Uh, it's a process. It's not something coming that easy at all. However, we are really we have achieved a lot in the number of sites that we have managed to to, to change. Okay, uh, uh, thank you, Engineer Kamal. And also, there is an, a question for uh, LCL shipments. So, uh, with LCL shipments, there is only uh, one receiver in the bill of lading, and then it is split into into several uh, importers. After that, in the warehouse. So, how uh, will it be done through Nafisa? And also, if there are like um, personal effects, I mean, if if there is a shipment with just uh, somebody getting their furniture, a private person who is not uh, who is not a trader or or an importer, would they have to also register yes. uh, on the ACI? Yes. Uh, concerning the first question, the LCL. Of course, the uh, the, the bill of lading will uh, will be in a sense uh, split as it comes in here. It will come into the name of the uh, uh, the party that's taking care of the shipment itself. Then, when the when the manifest comes in here, it will be split to the right uh, recipients of it. The point is that the uh, what I would call it, the, the if we were more than one trader into that container, we had uh, our boxes into one and the same container. The three of us have to make this declaration. We we have to be as traders. Each one of them, I put my boxes, the number of boxes, what I'm importing. This uh, will be handled separately, as I said, when the manifest comes in. But there are three shipments. The 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 the, the, the one LCL bill of lading does not uh, will not be mapped to one shipment. It's not one shipment that is coming. It's three shipments that are coming in one box. It happens to be in one box. Okay. Thank uh, you. As far as the uh, yeah. as. As far as the uh, the personal uh, the personal effect stuff, we uh, we are actually at the moment as we speak, or actually since uh, two weeks ago or so, we discussed that. We did not come to the final conclusion with customs as far as how they want to approach it. So I believe probably by next week or so, uh, something will come out. So then we all would all know how uh, we will handle such cases. I, I'll take note of that, and uh, definitely I can send you back whatever that would come out. Okay, and uh, concerning the the implementation date, the the compulsory one on the beginning of uh, July, um, is this the shipment date or the arrival date of of the let's say of the containers? Well, I believe the shipment dates because uh, a shipment that would arrive on the first of July might have might have been shipped uh, six weeks ago, six weeks before yeah. that. I mean, no, we would be talking about. Shipping as of the for the beginning of, uh, of 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 July. I'd like to say something here, uh, Mr. Tarek, if you'd allow me. Uh, sure. it, 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 when we say compulsory, actually, I, that is the essence that I'm, I, I always get from the authorities here. They would like to see things settle down. They know that we know that initially there will be this ups and downs until things settle, but we would like to see it uh, starting to be serious as of the beginning of July. It will take uh, its time. That would be, of course, uh, forecasted and anticipated until everything becomes smooth and everybody becomes uh, happier and more used to the system. So it's not going to be a cutthroat thing at the beginning of July. 
to that. Even customers with the chain data amendments that uh, happens like into the manifest and what's happening here and there. All these cases will be handled at ease in the initial phase because uh, it is part of the change. It's part of the change management that will need to take place before everything becomes settled. Yes, very true. Thank you for that. And uh, and what's the target uh, clearance time? I mean, uh, to uh, to find for customers to finalize here. I tell you something. Actually, we have always been shooting for two to three days. That is when we started a year and a half ago, or two years, close to two years now. Uh, we have uh, through through the system. I'm talking about the uh, processing time between the time that your transaction is registered at customs and the time you got the approval of customs to clear with all the other OGAs included. I'm not talking about adding the time when you, you took your time to submit your documents or you spent some time to pay the money that, or the dues of the government or spent some time to, until you took it out of the port. I'm talking about the, the, the pure govern, the government Customs and OGA's uh, performance. I was talking about. We were talking about two to three days. Um, I'll tell you something. Uh, with all the difficulties that we experienced uh, since we st we started uh, mid March 2019, with the first site in an airport, and then all the way uh, 2020, which is a full year, we looked at it with everything included, without excluding any outliers. Without any, I mean without excluding any special cases that took so long to get done. The overall average, if I'm not mistaken, came to 5.5 days. Some of them were a day or two. Some of them took 10, 12, 14 days, and some of them actually took much longer. All right. We looked into the things in detail, and we are really delving in and in. And, uh, and as I said early in my discussion, it, we found out that customs, on average, it's between two to three days. If your shipment is not subject to any intervention by any OGA, it would take no more than three days. It can go from one day all the way to little less than three days. Actually, you know, talking all, taking all all ports at every every place. But it gets more complicated when GOIC comes in or NFSA gets in, or you go to NTRA or the others. Then it gets it gets worse. So our target is to reach three days. And uh, to tell you the truth, actually, Mr. President, in the CIT uh, conference that took place uh, or event that took place uh, late last year, he said he would like to see the uh, the number, the percentage of cases whereby shipments are discharged on on on, on the trucks of the importer. These percentage to go higher. So that is why he said with the with the ACN stuff. He is encouraging all the pre pre uh, customs release uh, activities to take place to encourage traders to go through that regime to benefit from it at the end of the day. That's why I said ACI is not only for uh, risk management. The obligation on our, our shoulders as MTS is to cover both things. That's why it's it came as an integral part of Nafeza. So whatever that would be lodged, I will go. All this will be uh, the, the the food for the Nafeza system to operate. Uh, as the trader would like or wish to do. And and, and that's, this also applies to the airports, I mean, just to make everybody understand because yes, there's a lot of we questions. Put, correct, correct. We put uh, airports, uh, first stage will be seaports only. I need to have said that. July, is we are talking about seaports. We, uh, with the discussion with the Ministry of Finance and Customs, we decided that uh, to... Uh, to, 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 to stay a little bit longer until we address airports because uh, flights are shorter in time. So the time durations and requirements that are uh, uh, stated by customs have to be different to address the different nature of the uh, trips and stuff like that. So we would like to see that uh, first part in seaports uh, stable and happy, then be able to really address that in, uh, for the airports. And I think it's, it will be getting more complicated in the airports with the courier services. I mean, uh, uh, I think it's uh, it be very difficult to do that. Uh, uh, in a sense, it's not difficult at the moment. Uh, when since we started, actually, all the courier companies are on board of Nafeza. 
So DHL, FedEx, whatever, Aramex, and uh, the, they are on board. All the shipments are uh, get processed uh, by Anafisa. Uh, but within a framework of ACI, I don't know, to, to, to tell you the truth, it's not, uh, it, it's not that clear at the moment, of course, how it's going to be in order to make things uh, better, not worse, actually. No, of course. And uh, the last question is, uh, uh, now all the shipping lines will be asked to put the ACI code in the manifest. Uh, what Correct. if uh, this, this number is, is wrongly transferred from the, the shipper there to the, to the shipping line? Or, or it's missing a number or just the number is wrong or something? I'll tell you something. Okay, that's a very good and valid question. The reason why you are sending uh, the bill of lading uh, 48 hours prior to ship departure is that for the uh, recipient here in Nafisa in that regard or the system in Egypt to respond back to tell you this is an incorrect ACID or this ACID is recognized or this ACID does not pertain to those trade partners, does not pertain to an importer 123 Gamal Kotb and 788999 John Smith. This is not this ACID does not pertain to that shipment, so then the uh, the, the the transporter would be, would be able to really rectify the situ the 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 the, uh, the error, if I may call it, uh, at, at the appropriate time. Okay, and, and and what if it's not? I mean, I mean, if if the, there is no uh, collaboration with the exporter there and he didn't give the right number, I mean, is this going to be is uh, something? Yeah. Boss, uh, I, I, but uh, the first question, why would an exporter try not to be that helpful? However, uh, that could still be the case. I don't know. Uh, one idea that's just hopping to my mind, I can take a note of that. Uh, we can always, we can always, uh, Nafesa can always communicate the ACID number if the importer knows exactly who is going to take care of uh, transferring his shipment all the way to Egypt. If that is dictated, we can always, of course, send all the particulars of the ship and say, Mr. X in Egypt is go is said that he's going to import from Mr. Y. This with his number, with this address, he has all the details and his shipment, his shipment has been assigned this number so that, so that he, the, the shipper would have a clue as far as what is right or wrong. He can, he can find out by himself. But uh, if the exporter is not, uh, if, if worse goes to worse, like he's not uh, cooperating, I don't think uh, I don't think this shipment will be uh, received here. I, I, I wish customs, uh, my colleague, was here to to be able to answer because this is a customs uh, procedure. But from what I reckon is that uh, the authorities here need to 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 know about each and every shipment before discharging it at the port. Okay. Well, I mean, uh, there are a lot of uh, questions, but I know we're, we're running, running over time. And uh, thank you, Engineer Gamel. I mean, this would be a real um, doing business in Egypt will be like a, a dream come true, this, uh, this system. So uh, hopefully everything will, uh, will, go, will go smoothly. And uh, I would like to give back the floor to uh, Mr. Yan. And uh, thank you once more, Engineer Gamel, for your patience and for the, the insights. Thank you. It was a pleasure actually talking to you. Engineer Gamal, thank you. Thank you so much for this really very insightful uh, presentation and for your patience answering all the questions. Um, I would like to, to stress on one of your remarks, since this is very, very important to the German exporters, and uh, we are trying yeah, to ease yeah, the system now, irrespective yeah. of NAFESA, for various years. Um, so you, you mentioned that the Egyptian embassy would not have to verify yeah, the shipping documents, the bill of lading, which German chambers yeah. uh, issue electronically, yeah, so that these electronic certificates can be used and uploaded through blockchain, yeah, that it's being submitted yes. to NAFESA. Mm. This is very important since this, if, if we are uh, creating a misunderstanding there, this will cause lots of uh, topics for the German exporters. Okay. 
Uh, that is an excellent uh, point that you're bringing. Uh, if, if that is the case, let me, uh, I'd like to get an email of somebody we can, who we can communicate with to look into it into, the, into, into further detail. And for, certainly, I can assure you uh, up front that we'll not be taking uh, steps that can really, uh, that would uh, result in, uh, in uh, destabilizing uh, something that is uh, disregarded. So, and, and, and you said, you told me something that's very enticing. You said that they send that electronically. So this is a real, uh, a real uh, 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 good thing to hear. And oh, it opens doors to see how we can really make it better and better. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind, I'd be more than glad uh, uh, to, to share any discussion with whoever you would uh, recommend in this regard. And we can look into the details to make you confident and sure and make us again aware, aware of something that we may not be uh, fully aware of. Engineer Gamal, thank you very much. Uh, uh, kindly allow me to uh, briefly uh, address the exporters and the importers. Yeah, you have uh, uh, raised a lot of uh, questions and unfortunately due to time constraints, we are not able to answer all the questions now uh, during this uh, webinar. However, yeah, the Chamber took note of all your questions and we'll find answers and uh, get uh, back to you uh, in Germany via the D, uh, DIHK as well as the uh, Chambers, yeah. uh, your Chambers. And for the importers, yeah, kindly allow me to once more yeah, uh, stress the opportunity. If you go up just a little bit in the jet, 149 Karin El Shafe. There is a, a, a mini uh, customs procedures, mini diploma. We added a link to that, yeah, where Excellent. we really address all the questions yeah, and uh, we go through the procedures in detail. Unfortunately, this is subject to a little bit of fees, yeah, since uh, yeah, this uh, is mm. uh, run by our yeah, uh, uh, organization, uh, DE International. Uh, uh, anyway, it's worth it uh, to join us in there. It's in Arabic language, that's why that's for the importers. So in in other words, yeah, Engineer Gamal, thank you so much for your time. I know that you have a very, very busy schedule yeah, and that we yeah, stressed your uh, timely yeah, <laughs> availability no. yeah, uh, no. to the end. But still looking at uh, more than yeah, 150 participants after two hours yeah, means yeah, everybody was very electrified by your presentation. Yeah, and uh, uh, Tarek, yeah, thank you very much for moderating this session. And I really look forward yeah, to seeing you. And I really look forward yeah, to have success with the implementation of the system. So to cut down on customs clearance procedures. And with that, yeah, I would like to bid farewell to our guests and to the two of you. Thank you indeed and see you soon. See you soon. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking to you. As I said, I'm looking forward to receiving your questions. I'll make sure that they all get uh, answered. And I would be ready to repeat that. We can have dedicated special sessions for any further issues you'd like to address. Thank you so much, too. Thank you for giving us this opportunity. Don. Thank you, Ian, and, and thank you to all the chamber staff and uh, especially uh, Mayi Khattab. And uh, it was a huge effort, and thank you for all the participants. Shukran, Tariq. Shukran, Tariq. It was uh, very great. Thank you. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, meeting you, talking to you uh, soon. Again, for shipping lines and shipping agents, we'll be having, uh, again, dedicated sessions with them very shortly, within the next few days or next week, actually. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Have a good day. Bye-bye.